Okay, so subsurface scattering in Blender Octane. So this is actually uh, a lot simpler than I would have thought at first. It's just a matter of a few nodes to link in. You'll see it's quite easy. And if you go, if you want to follow uh, this tutorial and do the same thing as I did, you can download this model, which you can find at 3D Scan Store, free 3D head model. You have to download it, and um, inside the downloaded file, you'll find the OBJ that we're going to use. There's a jacket, but I'm only going to focus on the head. So import the head OBJ. There's also eyelashes and eyebrows if you want to test them out. So I have imported the head and the eyebrows. I'm in path tracing. I have a max preview samples at 500. And I also have an HDRI by default here. Okay, so let's shade this head. So we're gonna go looking for the texture. We're gonna need the color, which is the albedo, the gloss, the normal, and specular. The color is the albedo, but we're not going to use it in the in the albedo section. I'm going to put the gloss into the roughness. The specular goes into specular, and the normal goes into normal. To make this work properly, you need to change this to diffuse in the universal. The transmission is white and the albedo is black. So as you can see, it's already beginning to introduce a bit of uh, translucency here. But the thing is, uh, what we are gonna need here is the uh, random walk. So I'm gonna go Shift A, random walk, medium. This goes into the medium here. It's already introducing density here. And I want to add the albedo now, so the albedo goes into the albedo. Get this, but the ears are white, and I'm going to create a multiply texture. Shift A, multiply texture. And I'm also going to introduce the RGB spectrum because I want this to be the color of the blood inside the skin, maybe something reddish. And I'm going to combine the albedo and the uh, orange. And I'm going to plug that into the radius. And as soon as you do this, you already get a great result. Basically, that's it. But I'm going to add a few steps to make it look even better. You can play with the bias here to show not much translucency and a lot of translucency. Uh, so if you go there it means you're gonna have to put a color correction here and maybe maybe play with the gamma these parameters look all right with me you can still if you want put more density or less density uh, but i think 100 was nice so i'm gonna keep it that way and I'm going to introduce another thing. Uh, you don't really need to do this, but I kind of like it. I'm going to put a bit of sheen. If you put it up to the white, it's going to showcase too much of that. But still, I like it. So if you just showcase uh, uh, just a little bit of sheen and then play with the roughness, maybe. This was all right. Uh, you can... It's going to create some sort of uh, rim light that I think is nice here, for example, and on the nose and the chin. It catches more light, which I think uh, gives for a more uh, realistic uh, skin. And one more thing, uh, which is also optional, but I like to introduce a bit of uh, dispersion because the skin is never of one single color it will create more variation in the color of the skin so you can uh, play with this but not too much let's say 0 0.03 uh, in the end i added a little bit of uh, more sheen and less dispersion 
this is the result that you will get with these parameters. Uh, dispersion is really optional, you don't really need to use it, but I can like it. And uh, basically that's it for the skin. For the eyelashes, just create a new material. And go looking for your skin material. But I need, go I need to change things here, so I have to unlock it. This is going to be hair. I don't need the medium, but I need the color. So I unplug this, the albedo, and I put it into the albedo, and transmission goes black. And I'm also con going to delete the sheen and the dispersion. Select all the hair that you need to shade, and the last one is the one that you just shaded. Press Ctrl L, materials, and you're done. The ears and nose looked too low poly, so I added a subdivision surface to smooth it out. And this is the rendered image, and I think it looks amazing. So I hope you learned something, and I'll see you soon with another tutorial.